All right, welcome everybody on YouTube in the future, and of course, all the wonderful people here in Twitch chat also. Um, oh, Theor, thanks for the kind words. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. All right, so we have a, a donation deck here to go with. We have Naya Angels. So we have the strength of our Explore package, so we know how good that is, backed up by these uh, angels that are so good against aggro. So I'm thinking our deck could be pretty good here against aggro, like like what we have going on uh, with that. And we also have... Um, and so in the sideboard, we have like some things against uh, control also, like Cinder Vines is a new card that looks pretty exciting uh, that we're going to try out here. Trish... Uh, Trishakin with the sub. Thank you so much, Trish, for that. There we go. That's sub number nine on the day. One away from another pack. Yeah, Hunt uh, asks, why do I wear a tie at home? It looks looks like I just got home from work or something. Yeah, that's that's true. It probably does. Um, but this is just how I like to present myself. Uh, I I like how I look in a, in a dress shirt and a tie, and so that's why I like to wear one. You know, I'm yeah, I am like working right now, and you know, uh, and this is just how I like to present myself. Could this deck use the new enchantment that makes creatures enter with riot and uncounterable? If it honestly, maybe it could. Honestly. Um, yeah, that could be something that could be useful in the deck. That's a that's a good card to rhythm of the wilds there. That's a good card to kind of be thinking about while we go through our games here. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm wearing pants as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Phantom. Alright. So let's try it out. 5-1 and then 2-2, two, two, hoping to rebound here. I don't think Rhythm is a must in the 75 for green-red decks. Um, like, I wouldn't have it in my uh, Naya value deck that we're going to be playing up next here. Um, but it's a good card. <laughs> I, I actually do not own any sweatpants. Don't own any sweatpants, and I don't own a, a hoodie. Those are not clothes that I own. But yeah, I, I just went up and used the restroom a little bit ago, so probably saw that I was wearing dress pants there. All right. We got Turn 1 Land War Elf. Uh, unfortunately, we have... Forest and Mountain, so getting this Resplendent Angel in play is going to be a little tricky. Ooh, not as tricky. Do you think that Sun Cleanser will see any competitive play given the new Simic cards? No. I don't think so. I think it's pretty narrow. And just having a removal spell or something like that would be better. The the body that it has is just not a, um, very worthwhile. So I could play Incubation Druid there. Um, but I could also see like a Ritual of Soot. And I don't necessarily want to play into the ritual said that much. So I know my hurry. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, we've drawn the angel part of our deck against the control deck because the angels do not um, you know, they don't have any kind of enter 
ETB effects or anything like that. So they they don't. Uh, Hold that. They're not good against control, you know, because while they're really good against aggro, control easily answers them one for one with everything. So. Control matchups where you want all the explore creatures that like ETB and, and do things and stuff like that. So we need these Cinder Vines, want the other Domri and the Immortal Suns, both. Um, and Ixalan's Binding. And we have Coil coming out. Justice Strike, We I could see them having like some angels in their sideboard. Um... But yeah, Lyra's, like, in this kind of matchup, I, I don't want Lyra, I don't want Incubation Druid, I don't really want Land War Elf, Wild Growth Walker. I mean, I think, I think I'll keep the, the Land War Elf and maybe the Druid. Lyra can come on out, because it just costs five, and it's easy to deal with. Um, yeah, Aurelia, Shalai, or Splendid, like, hmm. It's going to be a tough matchup for us. I, maybe we should just have more in our sideboard here. Yeah, we didn't see any artifacts or enchantments from them. But maybe Night of Autumn is just better than, like, Aurelia. Just kind of in general. I guess I should keep Justice Strike in the deck. And go with this. I like Resplendent because Resplendent can, you know, make an army of creatures by itself. Uh, no, I don't really like Banefire. Okay, this is a lot better. We get our Explorer part of our deck. Now, hey, Antigenia Girl. Now, um,. We need this other green for these jade lights, but... Well, I... I think our opponent may have... Um, I, I certainly could see them having Lyra Dawnbringer in their deck. And I don't want to just be dead to Lyra Dawnbringer. So we have some Justice Strikes in there. It's a card that I, you know, I don't necessarily want to draw a whole lot of. But it's in there. Hmm. I think the best thing that I can find is a mortal sun. That's. That's certainly what I want to be finding, so I'm just going to get rid of these creatures. I'm going to be looking for the Immortal Sun. I'm expecting Kaya's Wrath up next turn. You know, like they, have, they have to deal with these creatures. And if I just play Cinder Vines into a counter spell, it's not not too good for me. See if our opponent... Okay, they don't have a counterspell for Cinder Vines. That's good. Good news. Okay, 
And, uh, hopefully, just pinging them for one a bunch. Hopefully that's good for us. I guess they're, yeah, they're just using a removal spell on the, the merfolk, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a fine removal spell to use there. Think about Hero of Precinct 1 for your deck. I don't love it. You don't really have, like, great use for the... One. Yeah, I don't love it. You have, like, 10 to 12 spells? No. No, don't play it. <clears throat> I should wait a turn, I think, here. I, I should wait a turn. Wait to have one more mana. See, I don't have enough for Immortal Sun, so they get to counter this. <clears throat> yeah, our, our opponent's just playing a, a very anti-creature control deck. We're just a very creature deck. It's going to be tough for us to win this. Yeah, I, I should just pass the turn. I kind of just, just played that instinctually, but I should pass the turn and see if we draw another land where I can double spell. This isn't a fight. You can keep up the pace. Yeah, time to pop Cinder Vines. It's not going to be good enough from here. We were going to draw that land, too. Really should have waited a turn. I mean, I might as well play around uh, Syncopate. Okay, resolved. It's probably still best to attack the fairy, honestly. Don't make another move. Because they could certainly have Cleansing Nova. Or, you know, Ixlon's binding something that gets rid of the Immortal Sun. If they don't get rid of the Immortal Sun, I'm probably going to win anyway. Or I'm going to have a lot better... I'm going to have a good chance. So I think it's it's actually okay just to attack the Teferi. Never, never mind. Maybe not winning. Maybe just a bunch of lands. Tilt. Wish we had an Arch of Araska as one of one of our lands. Yeah, Mortal Sun resolving really good for us. Uh, we'll get creatures eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cleansing Nova would work for them. Tilt. I have two Planeswalkers. I have two Domries in the deck. No, I don't. I don't think they would counter Domri since it doesn't do anything with the Mortal Sun. Plan. And I don't think there's really a reason to put Domri on the battlefield right now either. Just have it chilling over there. And just like 
you know, show them. Um, Cinder Vines likely gets countered. Yeah, if they remove the sun, I can just play Domri then, right? Though, right? But like, what if they, what if they have like a Dream Eater? that bounces the immortal sun and then attacks Domri. I don't think playing a Domri right now makes much sense. I have infinite mana. I can easily play Domri after the immortal sun's been removed. All right, Immortal Sun, doing its thing. Um, yes, yeah, so the point was they won't counter Domri now, but they might if they get rid of Sun. Um, that's kind of fine with me. Aurelia is good against Seal Away. That is true. Right. Do I just... They, we showed them Justice Strike Game 2. So maybe they don't have Creature in their deck. No, they still probably have Chromium. Yeah, it was so dead in a game that we won. Likely it won't be dead in a game that we lose. Likely. I don't know. We'll have one in the deck. We'll have one. Now we could kill Chromium. Justice Strike will kill Chromium. They'll block with their Chromium, it'll take damage, then we Justice Strike it instead. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm going to keep this. We're on the draw, we have a Scry. Branch Walker helps our land situation. We have lots and lots of lands in the deck, we got 25. As we saw last game, we have lots of lands. I think I think this is better than a five card hand. Yeah, where are all those lands at from last game? Oh, Justice Strike, why aren't you a land? We had three looks to get to second land for Branch Walker. We scryed one to the bottom, drew one, and now draw our second one. Oh, dang. That's really unfortunate. Back in it. As long as there's no Teferi. See, y'all are saying it's dead Justice Strike. I can't beat that card. I just discard my Justice Strike. Everybody in chat was telling me, why are you playing Justice Strike? Get rid of this Justice Strike. Literally every single person. Am 
we'll go with Angel over Knight. Um, yeah, we do have Binding that can get rid of Dawnbringer. Let's, I'm known for my excellent timing. If I Binding get rid of Dawnbringer, though, they can tuck it with the Fairy. If they, okay, if they had Seal Away, then we'd have Night of Autumn. Pretty interesting that they, um... You know what? I'm not done yet. Let Teferi take a hit and then Mortify. Like they were scared of something else. I could play Aurelia so they can't seal away Resplendent Angel, or I just Binding. I guess I'm going to try to Binding. Dang. Nothing worked. Keep up the pace. Yeah, this is just a, a real mana trouble game. Um, this is a a really really bad matchup for us just in general. Um, like I, I can get one angel and play to, to block Dawnbringer. I need that binding. Or I need the I need the uh, justice strike still. Yeah, justice strike would have been good. Vivian would have been good, but we couldn't really play things. Man trouble there. But yeah, control. You know, control deck with you know just lots of removal and counter spells. That's going to be just really difficult for angels to beat. That's that's the problem with angels is uh, you know it's a bunch of three, four, five mana mythics that don't really have any ETB effect and are very easily answered by control decks. Um, Rhythm of the Wilds is very good against control. That's that's what Rhythm of the Wilds does. It is a very good card against control. So yeah, I could certainly see this deck playing Rhythm of the Wilds in the sideboard there. Um, could certainly see that being the case. Just hope they're aggro. We gotta draw lands and have them be aggro. Okay, they're aggro. Hmm. Vampires. Not what I was expecting. All right, where are our lands again? I I would much rather have Rhythm, Rhythm of the Wild than Carnage Tyrant in my sideboard against Control. All right, Lava Coral is good. Get rid of that. But I'm a lot lower on Carnage Siren in general than a lot of people are. Asper is the kind of deck that just, you know, their their deck's built around sweepers. And Carnage Siren is a six mana card. It just gets eaten up by any sweeper. Man, 
man, Fleck. Uh, sorry about this one. Yeah, we have 25 lands and 6 mana creatures. <laughs> That's... Yeah, 25 land, 6 mana creatures. That's over half the deck. Yeah, we've, we faced mono white and mono red with Simic that had really, really good hands and ran us over. Can happen. Alright, we got even... Yeah, see... I have a lot of good sideboard cards against uh, aggro here. Probably just too many. Probably need even more for control. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to cut Lana Werewolf. You know, just getting swept up by Deafening Clarion. Maybe I don't need all these bindings. You know, two binding. Well, we need. We don't need any bindings. I think so, huh? Um, Shaper Sanctuary against Control. Not a, a huge fan of that card either. Um, it, uh, you need it, for it to be effective, you need it uh, right away. You know, if you draw that card later, it's not gonna be, not gonna be any good. Um, so that's that's kind of a problem where you, you just like the games go really long against control. So you playing like a card that is like a bad top deck. That's that's not good. And then plus again they just they can just have sweepers that uh, that just clean up your stuff and you know like there's times where you'll draw you know, like maybe like two cards. You know like one mana draw two is like if it was one mana draw two all the time that could be worth it. But it's not always just one man draw two. Cool, Skull of Mind's been playing Quasi Dupla Ooze, and it's so fun and surprisingly successful. Yeah, I, I think I like that deck a lot. I think it's it's pretty powerful. It's the Simic Adapt they were playing a little bit ago is is you know similar to that. Um, but yeah, Quasi Dupla Ooze is awesome. All right, so this time we're looking better. We actually get to hit land drops, and we have a curve. We're actually, we're looking good here. Hitting land drops is good. Mm. No, I think I'd rather have Rhythm of the Wild than Dawn of Hope. Um, we saw like that last game against our opponent. Not sure if... Oh, Don of Hope's just pretty slow. I guess they're not... People aren't necessarily playing, um, Niv-Mizzet too much anymore. Don of Hope was really bad against Niv-Mizzet. Um, that's not super popular in the control decks. Nimizit just raced it very easily. It's the thing. If, if your opponent has any kind of clock, Dawn of Hope is very slow. I think just a better plan is just Sorcerer Spyglass. Um, Sorcerer Spyglass, Rhythm of the Wild, and, uh, and Planeswalkers. Like, It's kind of hard not having Vivian in the deck, honestly. I mean, this is 10. They have Seal Away. 
Nope. Yeah, Esper is looking better than Jeskai right now. Kaya's Wrath is is awesome. And Mortify is really good. But, uh, yeah. It is kind of hard to tell. But, yeah, possibly. Good, good answer there. Any thought to the three drop that can't be countered makes your creatures uncounterable and gives you hexproof? Plus spyglass in the. Wait, there's a three mana card that can't be countered and makes your creatures uncounterable and gives you hexproof? I don't think there's a card that does all of that. I don't, yeah, I don't know what card that is. Alright, good curve. We got lands and spells. Yeah, I was actually pretty happy with the Mardu Angels deck. Um, we played that the other day. Seraph of the Scales was surprisingly good. What are the finishers with Esper? Yeah, of course, Teferi, of course, is the, the big one. Um, I actually think that Esper should be playing Dawn of Hope as a finisher. I don't, I don't know if they do. Uh, yeah, a lot of people play, like, Chromium. I'm not a big fan of Chromium. I actually like Dawn of Hope a lot in Esper. Walker, perfect draw. I mean, not perfect. I mean, Jade Light Ranger would have been better, but you get the point. It was good. Yeah, question, why was Seraph good? Can you elaborate? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was also not very high on Seraph um, from just, you know, like, whenever I did the set review. Um, but it just kind of played out pretty, pretty well. Uh, we didn't face a lot of Lava Coil decks, which certainly helps it. Um, but, you know, it, it traded with something and left a couple 1-1s. And, two, you know, two 1-1s is pretty valuable. And so, yeah, it just kind of... It was more, you know, is is better than I thought it was going to be. I don't think necessarily Chromium is bad in Esper. Just so situational. It's kind of hard, you know, like you do need you know, something as a win condition. Just not thrilled about about Chromium, because it's just not that great of a card. That's a big Sky Marcher Aspirant. Noxie, I think right right now I'd be bringing Naya value, um, but I'll be, you know, still playing that later today, and then uh, streaming tomorrow. Thursday we're doing a 12-hour stream for getting to a thousand YouTube subscribers. So 
So, of course, thank you everybody for helping us get there. Um, and uh, if you're not following on the YouTube channel to see all these replays, feel free there. Feel free to go there. Um, and click the follow button, youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. And then Friday, I'm going to be uh, writing out an email to the subscribers. I'm just going to, you know, sit, click send to all subscribers. And um, in there, I'm going to have two decks, at least two, maybe a third, but at least two decks um, that I would recommend for the weekend with sideboard guide on there. So two deck guides there. All right, we get to just activate this Resplendent Angel, and yep, this is what angels do. Angels just beat up on on aggro. If so if my opponent blocked that last turn, I I was playing Resplendent Angel. I wasn't going to activate July. I was gonna I was gonna just strike their Legion Lieutenant if they blocked the previous turn uh, to make their creature smaller and still play Resplendent Angel. And Zap getting in uh, in that sub sub hype. Welcome. That is sub number 10 on the day. So we'll be cracking a pack open after this. Angels are the heroes we need against the Vampire Menace. <laughs> Most definitely. All right, we're back on. We're on the board, one and one. Let's crack a pack for getting to ten subs. All right, come on, Mythic. So y'all know we're looking for Mythics. Mythic. Not a Mythic. It's a decent threat, though. But it's not a mythic. How long do I sit in a Nexus game until I quit and report? I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, if your opponent can't win, I, I don't. I honestly just don't don't know. That's kind of the problem with not having like a chess clock kind of thing. Um, I, just, I just don't know what to do. Maybe somebody in chat knows what to do. So yeah, you have a mortal sun out, they can't win. I don't know. All right, we're playing a Simic deck. Yeah, just go watch some Netflix. <laughs> yeah, you can just uh, see, chill here and watch the stream here. Lightside says, that happened to me recently. He conceded after 20 minutes. I was just sitting there watching Todd. See, there you go. <laughs> if they don't play a win con in 15 minutes, you're legally allowed to leave. <laughs> Uh, that's a good one. Where's our lands? Why why have we just not drawn any lands? We already you know, kept a two lander on the draw with a explore creature in turn three, we still don't have a land. That's yeah, rough. Our opponent's dropping like biogenic ooze. Okay. Alright, it certainly feels like uh, Frilled Mystic here. Which of your newer decks do you think is the most functional stable? Um, I think the Simic Adapt is, is good. Naya Value is good. Um, yeah. I don't really know any of the new decks that... Like, there may be 
one of the new decks that's not functional stable, but they kind of all are. I guess it's better to be like, you know, ask like which which one you feel like building. And I could have an answer for you. I think that'd be a little easier. Mario Aristocrats went really well. It, it uh, I think we did better with it the first time than the second time. Um, I don't think the Ajani was really worth it that we added in the second time. Um, still need better things against, or it's just, it's tough to beat red with that deck, especially like Goblin Chain Whirler and a bunch of burn spells. You know, you know it's, it has a painful mana base. It's, it's really good at grinding out opponents. It's good against control kind of thing. And, um, so Mardu Aristocrat's good against the aggro decks like mono white and mono red are real tough for it. I don't think the Knights deck got any upgrades as far as I know. No reason to attack into the 3-5 that the Incubation Druid is. It's so nice just playing at instant speed and just having all the tools in your hand and knowing exactly what the opponent's doing. Um, I didn't see any of the 5... I, I looked at some of the 5-0 lists today. I didn't see any that I that I loved. Honor Guard does not stop Riot from happening. No, Riot is not an enter the battlefield trigger. It just the creature just enters with a one one counter or with haste. There's no trigger for Riot to stop. I should play the other Resplendent Angel here. That's probably better than playing the, wild, the Jade Light Ranger. Oh, wait. Jade Light with Wild Growth triggers Resplendent Angel. Whoa. That's great. I've never had that happen before because I've never played those cards together. That's pretty sweet. They can still have Angel of Grace here. All right, so the Angel trade, so we just trade Angels. They're down to 11. That card's really good. Precognitive pre Perception. That card's really good. Uh, do I have Simic Adapt uploading right now? I don't. Oh no, I can start that uploading. I'm behind.
Hmm. You don't get what the, the Fiend is actually good? Oh, I, I understand what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, you're in a different conversation. I got you. Um, so, do... So, question for y'all. Um... Okay, Fiend Hunter. I got you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, like, when you're playing, like, a creature deck with things like, uh, um, Collected Company, things, ways to find your creatures, uh, maybe find Finality, get it back, things like that. Um, but yeah, you could also just have a removal spell. So, uh, question was, like, with the YouTube channel, basically, do y'all think that I should do like Jeff Hooglin does and have the Twitch replays here for subscribers only and to incentivize people to go to the YouTube channel to watch the replays there? Because um, I feel like I have more, like I think I have like as many or more people watch the replays on Twitch than on YouTube. And so, you know, it makes it slower to grow the channel, probably. Um. Fatal says that sounds fair. Skull to Mind says sounds like a good approach. Fair, good idea. I, th I think YouTube will be more revenue for me um, later, right now, it's, right now it's not, because I'm not partnered, um, but I just hit the two numbers needed to be partnered the last couple of days of 4,000 hours watched, and, uh, 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, but I, I basically get nothing from the Twitch replays, it's like, just... All I would get from the Twitch replays is just like ad revenue from people joining in and watching an ad, and that's like a penny each time, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. The only thing about. Yeah, the, the Twitch replays are muted due to, to copyright music. Yeah, the Twitch replays get muted some. The YouTube videos, I, are not muted. All the, yeah, I already have, like, the YouTube channel with, where it's not muted. Yeah, no, they're, they're all uploaded that day, like, Tatter, like, the Azoria Super Friends that we played earlier is already uploaded. Like, I, I upload them while I'm streaming. So, yeah, there are, there, they are all uploaded. It takes, like, an hour to, to, hour, hour and a half to upload, so, like, while I'm playing the next league, then one gets uploaded and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I just don't know how to do editing Sheet Mage, so um, I just don't really know how to do that. I, yeah, I, I don't know how to do et video editing. Okay, you can have Twitch as a pop out on mobile, unlike YouTube. Gotcha. Okay. All right, Rustic. What's all right? One one second. Let me sideboard here. Um, so we're playing against Flash, Mortal Sun, Binding. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I just had to cut a couple of things there real quick. I had to sideboard real quickly. I want a Mortal Sun because this certainly seems like a you know grindy matchup where I want the card advantage that a Mortal Sun provides. 
Um, Rustic said, so you said, um, being able to check the VODs is nice because you can go back and try to understand things if you miss something. So what do you mean by, by that where, you know, like, that's different from watching on YouTube? The one thing that's like, that's like, the main thing that's different is YouTube doesn't have like the Twitch chat in it. But of course, you know, people will be able to, you know, you, you can just also sub on Twitch to be able to have that option, but yeah, the, the YouTube videos do doesn't have the Twitch chat on there. I, I mean, I could, I could put like a small Twitch chat up, up on the, on the side, like on the left over here. I don't want it very big, but I could just have a small one on the left. Okay, so you don't have to wait until it uploads to YouTube. I got you. I got what you're saying, Rustic. That makes... Okay, that makes sense. While you're watching... If you just missed something here, you can... Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, link for this deck. Yep, exclamation point deck list. No, I, I will not be in the Pro Tour. Hmm. Let's coil that. Okay, so Crips wife Rania used to do editing streams where she edited Crips videos for YouTube. If those streams are available somewhere, I might give you a quick look at how other people do it. Okay. Yeah, there are certainly up there are certainly like kind of good reasons to have to have the chat on the screen. Um, I know when I've I've talked about it with like on stream here before. Um, people have been saying no, no chat on stream. That's a good qu- That's- That's something to look into, for sure. Could I make the VODs, you know, like, free for less- You know, like, when they're greater than it- Like, after one day, then it's sub only? Like something like that. Yeah, yeah, the chat would be like here, but yeah, you're right. It is kind of awkward because there's just always like stuff on on here. YouTube does not have the overlay where you can hover over the cards. I don't think the VODs have that either, though. Do the VODs have... I don't think, like, the, the replays have that either. Yeah. It's so, like, replays just don't have that either way. Because, yeah, that's, that's like a, a program called Deckmaster that I have up and running right now. So the videos don't have that. Yeah. But yeah, that is that is very useful for sure. I'm worried about settle. So I don't think there's really a reason for me to play Land World for Wild Growth Walker. Cleansing Nova, you know, could like kill all my creatures and that would be bad. And I guess like these two creatures aren't going to help me win the game really when we have all those on the battlefield already. Okay, Hunt says I think it looks really really bad and adds too much clutter when stre streamers add chat to the to the screen. Dark Phoenix, I know that's your bit, but no. The answer is always no. All right, we are two and one. Yeah, two and one. Here we go. What do you think about Golgari splashing blue for Unmoored Ego and Hydroid? Um... I, th I think it's a little 
Or I'm not sure. Like, Hydroid helps Golgari win the late game, but I didn't know that Golgari was having trouble winning the late game. So I don't know if it's it's really necessary. Cool. All right, well, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah, so chat on screen would be like... It would be like this. I guess. It would be like over here. And maybe a little smaller. Maybe something like that. Like, is that... Is that even worth it? It's just like, is that, a, is that like a big deal for like people watching the YouTube videos? They're like, man, I really wish I could watch, really wish I could read Twitch chat while I'm watching the videos. <laughs> Some people do love it though, right? That's a good point. Yeah, it just doesn't look nice. I'd rather no chat, honestly. No, I'm not planning on attending GPs and Magic Fests. All right, we're playing against aggro. Now I'm a stay-at-home streamer now. That's pretty fair. We're not going to be able to please everybody. You have a jank gate mill deck mass? You should send it my way, mass. We had donation for a mill deck for tomorrow. So, I need a mill deck for tomorrow. Uh oh. We really need that Leer Dawnbringer. This looks bad for us. One way to make the lack of on-screen chat less of an issue for YouTube is to be diligent about reading questions that you respond to aloud for context. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. I, I tried to do that. Um, any thoughts on the standard meta? Yeah, I tried to read the questions for that. Um, any thoughts on the standard metagame? It's still certainly in flux, and we are... Um, Just coil this thing. And uh, we're still trying to figure out, you know, like what's good and everything. Uh, and that takes time. You know, like it's the thing that's the standard metagame is not going to be figured out over a week or two. It takes time. There's going to be new decks next week. There'll be new decks the week after that and everything. Um, but it has been uh, very enjoyable so far. It's been, uh, I've been enjoying playing the standard format. The Gaia's in the sideboard were main board against Mill, but I have been doing best of one, so I took him out. So, but you can fix it for best of three. All right, no removal over there, opponent. No removal. We got the Dawnbringer. Come on, you, they have last card. Hopefully, it's not a removal spell. No. Alright, not dead. Not dead yet. 
We have just two Dawnbringers, is that right? We have three. Okay, we can still draw another Dawnbringer. They pay four. They're at 13. They're going to pay another four. No. All we needed was a creature. All we needed was any creature. Just a blocker. That's all I needed. Or if they just didn't gain 5 life from this consume. Why does it have to have the gain life equal to its power clause? Uh, if they just didn't gain that 5 life. Any shock land you say? <laughs> okay. So, Cyborg, Binding, Clarion, Knight of Autumn. Um, we are cutting Llanowar, Domri. What's the other four? I think Druid. Azori Super Friends was like a, um, a lot of Thopter stuff, uh, you know, like Deploy and uh, Tezzeret and you know, the new blue white one, Dovin. I mean, I like all of these cards. All right, so got one more. No, Resplendent is so good in the late game. It's just it's just so so good in the late game. Resplendent Angel is, is awesome. We can't cut it. Cut an explore. I'm not cutting an explore with Wild Growth Walker against aggro. I could see cutting a justice strike. Or a Knight of Autumn or a binding. I'm gonna just go one binding. Any reason why Jeskai is not seen much play anymore? Um, I think it's kind of thing of like people just playing new things, you know, trying new things. Uh, would be my guess. Binding is good against Vanguard. Um, and that is true. I think we should be fine against Vanguard in general, though. We have a lot of creatures. Cut angels, add ooze. Good this game. Wow, Growth Walker, you're late. Tardy. That's a detention. I don't think I need a binding that. There's probably going to be something else that I'll want a binding. Never mind. Should have binding dip.
Never mind. Should have bindinged it. Instantly punished. I don't think the four mana Sphinx is, is very good, and uh, there's something to binding. Yeah, and I have not tried Benthid. Um, I would think Benthid, like I was, I, I don't hate Benthid, mesmerizing Benthid. I think it's it could be okay, and the like. I think it's like kind of okay on rate, but kind of the problem is there's Biogenic Ooze in the same set, and Biogenic Ooze just is a lot better. And so, yeah, I was thinking like maybe mesmer mesmerizing Benthid could be like something that you use the uh, the birthing pod creature. Uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar, use that to to go get, but um, all right, maybe another binding. They're playing Angels also. Hmm. Maybe I don't play Clarion. Maybe two Clarion, two binding. A Clarion hasn't really seemed like it would be that good in this matchup, actually. Maybe this is just not a Clarion matchup. I just have one in there. We'll go two. It's good against history. And it kills Resplendent Angel in history. Shalai is very good against Burn. The problem is, is Shalai is not good against all the other decks. It's not good against Golgari with Vivian and Ravenous Chupacabra. It's not really good against um, Counterspell decks, and that doesn't really match up against Lava Coil. But it is really good against the decks with Burn and. Um, and in particular, risk factor. <laughs> I don't wear a tie when I go to sleep. No. Very good against Settle the Wreckage. Yep, great there. Something for me to binding. Are they going to be playing Lyra Dombringer? Certainly see see them playing Lyra Dombringer, and I, I'd much rather I'd rather binding Dombringer than Angel Resplendent Angel. I think maybe that's not even true. Angels are bigger. I know they could double block, and I just trade with one with Aurelia, but that's honestly not not that bad of a trade, I don't think, because Resplendent Angel is so scary. Okay, I'm fine with that. I think I'm fine with that. So they get to, you know, get, they get to slowly get their angels back with Memorial to Folly, but it's a, it's a slow process. I think we're looking good here. Hmm, looking a little less good. I'll just let those trade. 
I was thinking I was going to eat it, but no, I have a 4-3. I was going to just trade. Yeah, we lost to aggro a couple of times. Uh, played against some aggro opponents that had real good hands. And that can happen. That one's getting binding. Get out of here. Forever. Forever and ever. DDs are donation decks. Those are decks that... Uh, these are decks that I haven't built. Um, that people donated to see play. This is game three, too. Close one. Hmm. I'm gonna have settle. I kind of have to have settle, right? Maybe I should have played July. Just have another Angel of Grace. So I didn't, like, you know, we've seen Kaya's Wrath from them. I just thought, like, I don't want to put, like, another creature on the battlefield in case of a Kaya's Wrath. But I, mean, I guess they just have any removal spell. I mean, if I don't attack for, with, like, if I, hmm. Yeah, I guess I should have played July. I kind of clicked go forward a little too quickly here. So we know they can go to 10 life. All right, we got there. So if, I guess that was their plan, just to bluff settle. They could have, you know, activated. Um, they could have activated the, uh, the land and gotten some, some creature back and played that creature to have a blocker. They could have got, like, Res Resplendent Angel back and had a blocker, but... I guess no, they wanted to bluff. Brutus Simic Adapt that runs Biomancer's Familiar with Shaper of Nature. Works pretty well. Yeah, we played Biomancer's Familiar in our list yesterday. And it there was times where it did something. Um, but didn't always do something. All right, three and one. We're coming back. So, Mass, if you're still here, I don't understand this gate mill deck. Like, why why does it need all these gates? What do the gates do? I guess it's for... Okay, so it's for Gates Ablaze and Guild Summit. Which Guild Summit absolutely needs to be a 4 of. 100%. But, like, how does that, how does that help a mill plan? I guess. Is what I'm asking. Oh, uh, you had to go shovel Snowfleck? Sorry to hear that. It's going pretty good. We are uh, we lost our first one against Control, but we've been facing aggro decks since then, and we've been winning. Hey, Boot. Good evening. So we're 3-1. Looks like we're playing against some Drakes here. So 
So there's a... So yeah, so there's the mill enchantment when you draw is that Psychic Corrosion. And so you're just trying to draw a lot of cards, and then your opponent mills a lot of cards. Um... Well, that shock wasn't really necessary. Teamer, huh? Would Naya or Mardu Angels be better? Hard to say. I think Mardu is going to be better against Control. Naya is going to be better against Aggro. Where you have Deafening Clarion. And Aurelia. I guess Aurelia, Seraph of the Scales. I kind of like Seraph of the Scales. Honestly, I think Seraph may be a little better than Aurelia. Alright, we didn't draw a land. I think I would just want to double Branch Walker and look for a land drop. Bowler. How's school going for you? Alright, let's get Dawnbringer in play. They can gain a bunch of life for a splendid angel the previous turn or for the next turn. I don't think they have a board wipe, but yeah. So like we're gonna be bringing in our, you know, we have we have good sideboard cards for this. Uh, we'll have our um, Knight of Autumns and Cinder Vines and things like that here. Simic Adapt lost to a couple aggressive decks. We lost to Mono White and Mono Red. What's going on? Screen's freaking out. There we go. Um. Justice Strike. Yeah, I want to play Resplendent Angel. So many cards. Okay, we got we got one of these token things to block a three two at least. Oh, not you. Yeah, I wish our removal spell could take out that Murmuring Mystic, but it could not. 1-5 is just so big. If, it was, if we had a Lava Coil here after it blocked, we could have Lava Coiled it. 
the opponent's gonna have just infinite cards. Yeah, a little surprised they used the expansion there and not didn't like explosion. But we'll see. Hopefully they don't find another explosion. Um, you know, if, if our opponent cannot kill the Dawnbringer and Resplendent Angel... Could maybe potentially gain a whole lot of life and make it difficult for our opponent to win, bolting us down. But I guess they could they could also just mill us out with explosion, making us draw cards though. Wilderness Reclamation just doesn't really make sense as a card to print, kind of in general. Like I, I don't know what the upside of printing a, you know, four man enchantment untap, at your end step untap all your lands. Like what's like, what's the goal of having that card as just a card? Like, what's... You know, like, like why is that a card? Computer is acting up a little bit. Because <laughs> Teferi and tapping two just wasn't enough. Yeah, it certainly seems like a big design mistake. You know, like it. All right, so Aurelia is going to be able to have trample because Aurelia, you know, like Aurelia's ability gives red creatures trample. So you know, we was not able to give the Dawnbringer or this other card trample. Oh, I could have given Lyra Vigilance, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you just need enchantment removal. You got you have to be able to kill it. Hey Dirk. People were asking me with the Simic Adapt if it was really necessary to have so many rec Reclamation Sages and Thrashing Brontodons. And I don't have any bindings in the main deck, I don't think. So, 
We can kill a Murmuring Mystic now if they block the Branch Walker. I guess they're going to throw six creatures in front of Aurelia. Oh, am I not, I'm not even attacking with Lyra? Uh, that's bad. Okay, so I can kill one Mystic or I can keep Aurelia alive. I can do one or the other, but I can't do both. Yeah, I could just strike a bird and save Aurelia. Or I could just strike a mystic and kill it. But then Aurelia's dead. Hmm. I'm going to save Aurelia. Really wish I attacked the Dawnbringer. Uh, they're not necessarily low on spells. It kind of looks like they are. They're sneakily low, but I mean, all they need is like one explosion and they have infinite spells. But yeah, it really does have the trample, which is important. Yeah, no explosion, please. No explosion. Alright, they, they did not cast Radical Idea on, on end step. Got all that mana. Ah, that's why they had another Murmuring Mystic. They found another one. they have Star of Extinction? That'd be bad for me. Um, my favorite uh, deck in New Standard so far. Um, I like the Simic Adapt deck that we were just playing last, last league quite a bit. It's like a, a brand new deck. Um, but, of course, Naya Value, the deck that I'm about to play next, is certainly up there, too. Really like Naya Value. Alright, so we're attacking with everything. We'll make the Branch Walker a 5-4. Bobblight was a fun card. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely attacking with Incubation Druid. I think I even just attack with, like, basically do I attack with Llanowar Elf? I think I could just attack with Llanowar Elf, I suppose. That's annoying. That's annoying. At least we get a mentor. Ha! Druid hit him. These are all the decks over on the left that we're playing. We're currently on Naya Angels right now. We have Naya Value up next. We're already at 9 o'clock. Usually I stream 3 to 10 every single day. I was even on... Um, 
around 20, 30 minutes early today. These leagues... Think about this format, these leagues have been taking a while. Yeah, to find the list, exclamation point decks. That's where you can find all of our deck lists. Like, like we're on pace to maybe go towards midnight. No, I'm not planning on playing any paper events. I'm a stay-at-home streamer. This is my sole income is streaming here. And so it's a big hit taking off time to go to paper events. Um... I don't know how I'm going to break through this bird wall. Okay, so let's have Binding, Cinder Vines, Night of Autumn, could have Clarion. Um, I don't think Clarion's really worth it, honestly. Honestly, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, Immortal Sun, having us draw multiple cards a turn is something I'm certainly interested in. Um, to help us find more Knight of Autumn, Cinder Vines, and Ixalan's Bindings. Which means Domri has to go. Justice Strike comes on out. Uh, coils didn't really seem too necessary. And that brings us to 65. Um, what else? Like, do I just not play the mana creatures? You don't like Wild Growth Walker very much? I could certainly see not playing Wild Growth Walker. It gets kind of big. No, definitely not cutting Shalai. Think about, like, the other games. Like, pumping up my creatures all the time would be really good. I could see... Maybe we'll take out the two Incubation Druids, and I'll cut three of the four Wild Growth Walkers. Yeah, shall I just growing my entire team where like it makes all the other creatures a lot bigger with attack and everything is um, would be pretty nice. All right, Cinder Vines, we'll keep. I am glad they made Cinder Vines a card. You know, first reading Cinder Vines, it seemed like that it'd just kind of be a modern thing. Of, you know, I think even my review, I didn't think it'd do much at all in standard. Um, yeah, it's pretty good against these kind of decks. Yeah, there, there's some questions I get over and over and over again, but it's okay. I understand, and uh, I don't mind answering. Down, 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 down. I don't have a second white for that one. I still don't have a second white for this one either. Thanks, Eternal. Oh no! Rude.
Shalai or Aurelia? Aurelia. Man, I liked my cinder vines. Aurelia hits harder right away, which is why I played it. Well, I'm going to try to binding this. See if this works. They're opt-in. Looking for a spell pierce, I guess. Yeah, we're playing the explosion deck. They kept that card on top. Maybe, or they could just be looking for another disenchant. Yeah, this is my playlist. Yeah, I like Death Cap for Cutie a lot. Yeah, I certainly like them trading in an expansion just to opt with just an exp with just an, an expansion. I like that trade. Hey, outside today, it's it's been going pretty good. Um, this is all I do for, for work, if that's your question better than you. Question is, what do I do besides magic? Um, besides that, I keep up with sports, um, play video games. Favorite teams are the Texas Rangers and Minnesota Twins in baseball. And the Dallas Mavericks in basketball. I mean, this is just lethal, right? Yeah. And the Steelers in football, uh, you know, Steelers had a real unfortunate year. Um, Sultai Vanifar, I played that yesterday. This is Sultai Quasi Ooze. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. <laughs> no, I don't do any DraftKings or anything like that. No. Oh, uh, you're a Broncos fan? Yeah, that... Uh, well, the Steelers lost to the Broncos this year. That was a difficult game. All right. I guess I should have some answers to niv in my deck, I suppose. Probably shouldn't just be cold to niv -Mizzet. I mean, I have the Ixalan's Binding, obviously, but I don't think I want to just rely on that. Maybe just one Justice Strike. Do I need two Immortal Suns? Maybe just one Immortal Sun. I 
I didn't actually see what happened in the Saints game, but I, I've certainly heard that they got robbed. I watched I watched the Patriots Chiefs game uh, the other day after streaming. I watched I watched the Pats Chiefs, but I didn't I didn't watch the Saints Rams. Um, I used to like hockey when I was younger. Um, I like watching hockey, but I, I just don't I don't know like basically any of the players anymore, and like going back into the sport would be tough. Um, like getting back into, getting back into it and everything and. So it was a missed pass targeting slash pass interference call that would have given the Saints the win when they're, the ref was right there. Well, the Saints got a blown call that gave them the win against the Steelers. They got a free seven points that helped them win the, the Steelers game. It was a uh, incredibly obvious false start, or no, the false start one was the Chargers. They gave the Chargers the seven points. The Steelers one was a a complete miscall call for a pass interference. So like, um, they called it pass interference, and the Steelers defender wasn't even touching him. But like how the the it was like Steelers defender Saints guy trying to catch the ball. The defender was like behind him. And the ref was behind the defender, and so the ref thought the defender was pushing him in the back, but he wasn't at all. And so they just got the ball at the end, you know, on the one yard line, and got a free touchdown on a third third down play. That that's a uh, that was the what got the, took the Steelers out of the playoffs. Saints fans trying to sue Goodell over the call? Well, that's not going to happen. That's... Mistakes happen, you know? Like, referees are human, too, and everything. Like, mistakes happen. I have to get over it. Alright, am I Cinder Vines? So I can play Cinder Vines, crack it, and destroy the Wilderness Reclamation. Or I can just go Dawnbringer and hit him. So Dawnbringer makes this lifelink. I should probably just Cinder Vines. I get to hit him anyway. So they got a Murmur and Mystic. We're gonna have to fight through. Justice Strike can so I had a stop on their second main. That was my plan was like, you know, let them cast like whatever spell with Cindervine. Um and wait till their second main and before before they went to end step to trigger the wilderness reclamation, that's when I was gonna blow it up. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a penalty. That's incredible. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <clears throat> okay. Four and one.
no call and he told the other ref no penalty. He played on the Rams in the 80s and lives in South Carolina and Southern Carolina. Oh, uh, the, the referee did? Or like, yeah, like that, uh, yeah, that referee told, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so there's, there's where you can find the deck list there. Okay, and Simic Adapt from earlier is now up on YouTube. This hand looks just fine. So what do I want to do on turn two? Do I want to play Land War Elf, or do I want to play the Branch Walker? I think I'm likely playing the Land War Elf on turn two. So, you know, like, you know, getting the extra mana. Um... Is worth it, but sometimes you just draw the shock land and you're good to go. I wish I had stomping ground turn one. Yeah, Temple Garden. There you go. Yeah, you were close. You called. You called the shock land. Called the green shock land. All right, so they use the cast down, which is, which is honestly just fine for us. You know, we have like a, a really good curve here, two, three, four. Um, so we're hoping just to kind of keep on getting threats. The card I want to draw here is Domri. We got a Domri in the deck. We haven't played Domri yet. I, I want to draw this Domri. That's what I want. Ooh, they surveilled Notion Rain to Fairy over. So they probably just have lots of. Lots of spells. And I'm not I'm not milling over spells for myself. I I need more spells. Biogenic Ooze is really good. I like it a whole lot. It's uh maybe my favorite card. Um that has been a uh, favorite card for the new set so far. Um yeah, I've, I've played a lot of Biogenic Ooze decks <laughs> by now. But yeah, Quasi Dupla Ooze is a whole lot of fun. That's a good one. Okay. So yeah, I was certainly worried about Kaiser Wrath there. Didn't play another creature into it. Esper Control here is what we lost to earlier. Because it kind of played out like this. They just killed all of our things. And then we just ran out of stuff to do. And then we died. Spire with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. I think I think I don't extend into a wrath again. I think I just kinda like have this is a threat they have to kill, and if they kill it, then I play Shalai, which is a threat they have to kill, and so on. Where's my hype book? Aspire. There we go. Wow. So yeah, they just had much had I don't know, a bunch of lands or something. Why did they why did they not keep the Teferi? Like what what did they possibly have that whenever they notion drained and didn't keep Teferi? I don't know, that's weird. So the, wait, so they're Esper? Do I want bindings against Esper? No. Not really. Um, um, seal aways? Yeah, maybe they had seal aways. That could, that could be true. Are they gonna have? They're gonna be a like a, a deck that brings in Lyra also that I'm gonna want these justice strikes for. Potentially, 
Yeah, I think we want bindings. <laughs> it's not possible to run enough threats in this matchup, no. I, cer I certainly don't have enough threats. Ugh. Well. Can I really mulligan good mana in turn one land war elf? Hopefully, I'm hoping the opponent just has, yeah, like random, like, yeah, Thief of Sanities. Um, things like that. Tilt. Hopefully they have creatures. Thoughtsy's bug works. Strikes again. Hey, session. Can you explain quickly how you decide how many copies of a planeswalker you need to have in a deck? Um, I mean, I guess it just kind of depends. It's, I mean, I guess it depends on, you know, it depends on how, how much you really want to, to draw one and how much you mind drawing two, you know, like if you have four of them in the deck, there's a lot better chance that you draw two. Like, is that going to be bad for you if you have like one stuck in your hand while the other one's in play kind of thing? Hey, Baloney Pony. Yeah, our deck's been playing pretty well for us. I didn't play Aurelia the previous turn because of Kaya's Wrath. I had two creatures on the battlefield. I wasn't going to play another one. So it doesn't seem like maybe this Justice Strike is really that necessary. Ooh, that's a good card. Do I want to blow up the treasure map? I don't think so. Esper usually has ways to destroy binding. Um, for sure. Definitely want to binding a Teferi. But yeah, maybe maybe I should just be having If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Maybe I don't need the binding or justice strike. I don't believe Biomancer's Bio familiar reduces think. the cost of kicker, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh no, Artifactor Enchantment. It'd be pretty weird if it was just Enchantment. But yeah, no. skip to the good yeah, so Artifactor Enchantment. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty unrealistic for me to think that I'm going to do 14 damage with the Cinder Vines with them having a Teferi in play. I play a couple Dawnbringers. I play the Incubation Druids on the play. Really hope we have a a 
an immortal sun in our and we can get that down quickly. Possibly Esper is better than Jeskai. You know, it's, it's still to be seen. Um, Mortify. Mortify and Kaiserath are both good, real good cards, so. Uh, they got a couple good cards there. It's the best time to have Cinder Vines. Immediately. Start pinging them. I don't want them to. I don't want to play Branch Walker. Or they cast Thought Erasure, and my Cinder Vines is gone. Because Mortify is better than Cast Down, uh, because of the amount of enchantments in the format. That was bad for me playing that land there. Because we could, you know, because we could get like Sacred Foundry that I could put into play tapped or something. Stomping around, could have just put that into play tapped. But yeah, sorry, Immolation Shaman, I guess, does not work against Planeswalkers, no. Yeah, and then you can also get, uh, you know, creatures like, um, legendary creatures like Aurelia and stuff with Mortify. Our opponent had really good answers to the things that we were doing. Why not ping him when they cast Mortify? I did. It automatically did it, Jackie Moon. There is nothing for me to like, sac like, a, like sacrificing Cinderfy, Cinder Vines that needs a target to like an artifact or enchantment. There wasn't a target. How to beat their their deck without counters? I mean, we need we need planes. Like this is what planeswalkers are for. You know, like if we could, if we'd have like a planeswalker here or an immortal sun, you know, something like that. Just playing creatures is not going to beat the opponent, and that's all our deck has is just creatures. Because, yeah, like, they're really good at killing creatures. That's, that's like, what their deck does, is kill creatures. Hey, Timido. Yeah, Vivian would, would certainly be a really good good thing to have. Alright, hopefully we have the Immortal Sun you need right here on top. Come out. on, Immortal Sun. The Immortal Sun. Nope. That really is not going to win. We need the Immortal Sun. Domri. Something else. Hold that thought. It would have been nice if the Cinder Vines... Like, the Cinder Vines would have done a lot of work for us if we could stick around, but... They had to Mortify for it, unfortunately, for us.
We need to move quickly. So, both of our losses here were to Esper. Um... Yeah, certainly don't think we have a good Esper matchup. Um... But we want one our other ones. No time for a break. Oh, it's because we're playing final. We're we're facing the final boss here. And I didn't play our final boss music. Yeah, I like the Simic list also. Um, it does not handle mono white too well. I think mono white may be the worst matchup for the deck just in general. Honestly, I think I think that's the the worst matchup for the deck. Um. Yeah, I think that's probably just like the very worst matchup for the deck. But, uh, it's not so bad. It's not like, it's not like you, you lose 80% of the time Hurry. against Mono White or anything like that. It's not like that bad. It's, you know, it's probably like a, a 65% underdog though. Mono Red, it's also, also an underdog against Mono Red, um, but probably just more of like a, You're probably looking at like a maybe a six, you know, forty sixty matchup or something like that. You don't beat Mono Red's really good hands, but you beat like a lot of their average hands. Like, uh, like your average hand beats their average hand, but your good hands don't beat their good hands, kind of thing. All right, four and two. Esper is really awesome at killing creatures. If, if you want to play a deck that kills creatures, Esper does that, and uh, and especially like with just like our our build here, we have a lot of creatures. Like basically in the main deck, we have Jade Light, four Jade Light Ranger, and one Domri as like cards that are good against Esper. Like that's that's it. We have five five cards <laughs> you know like these creatures just don't have like etb effects that like draw cards uh branch walker can you know like if if you explore and you and you get a land so it can also um but you know like you know like these creatures are really good against aggro they're just not good against uh esper we just don't have card advantage in this deck um test out and improve the soul type vanifar deck again absolutely rendrock absolutely so yeah um, we, we're trying to go, I guess, Immortal Sun instead of Planeswalkers in this version, and it's, Immortal Sun's great if you draw it and you play it. It's awesome. It's, it's wonderful. Um, you know, can't say enough good things about the Immortal Sun wherever it's on the battlefield. You know, it dodges Mortify also, because it's an artifact, it's not an enchantment, so it's wonderful. The problem is, is that there's only two of them. You know, maybe there needs to be four, like maybe this Domri needs to be the Immortal Sun, and these also need to be the Immortal Sun. Or, or there just need to be plain, more Planeswalkers, you know? Like, Vivian Reed is a, a wonderful card. We just need Vivian Reeds. Um, yeah, Rhythm of the Wild is also a really good card against Esper. Uh, you know, that one is a little easier for the opponents to deal with with the enchantments and stuff. But, yeah, Rhythm of the Wild would do some work as well. But uh, there we go. So that was the uh, donation deck there for Naya Angels. So thank you, Fleck, for donating for that one. If you're watching this over on YouTube, don't forget, to, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And like always, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.